Hello there, and uh, welcome to um, Andre's YouTube vlog for July 1st, 2012. Well, as you can see, I'm holding my Olympus uh, E500 digital camera with the um, small telephoto zoom lens on it and the lens hood, which I recently found while cleaning my room. I just never thought there was much essential into it. This is actually my uh, fourth SLR camera that I have. I think I've shown you this in another YouTube vlog. But the reason why I mention this camera is because um, this year is marking the um, um, 20th anniversary of me being an official photographer. And you know, it's a beautiful but very humid July 1st. It's been pretty humid for the last three days. And it's going to remain that way most of the week. Typical um, Independence Day type weather around here. Anyway, that's my camera again. And um, I've been doing a lot of thinking about the photography that I've done. Uh, I photographed uh, Bangor Pride yesterday, and I've been going around to a lot of the gardens in the area and taking a lot of pictures of flowers. I've always wanted to take more pictures of people, but the weather's making me sweaty here. Anyway... You know, I never seem to get the chance, and I've discussed a lot of different things about my photography in this vlog and how it affects my life and so forth, but I wanted to give you a little background and history. Um, when I was a little kid, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, whatever, you know, every Christmas or birthday I'd be given one of those little uh, rectangular-shaped uh, 110 film cameras. You remember those? And uh, I had a Fisher-Price one that was bright blue and other little ones. I mean, they were very easy to get. And, uh, you know, I'd take pictures with those, but, you know, never anything really good. But I always desired to take really, really good photographs. And, you know, Kodak had their little slogans, oh, you want to capture the good times, or whatever it was. And, as I've said before, I never really much liked the word capture in reference to photography. Uh, I much prefer the idea of freezing time, of suspending the moment in one image. And that was important to me. Um, when I was around 11, 12 years old, I started getting really interested in other people's photographs. Uh, people like Ansel Adams and his um, nature photography and the history of photography itself. And I started getting very interested in cameras. And I decided after a lot of research and just the artistic elegance of them that I wanted one of the mechanical metal 35 millimeter film uh, single lens reflex cameras and what that meant is that there was a mirror inside the area in front of the lens and when you look through the camera in the viewfinder you'd see the same thing as in the lens and that was always very appealing to me the camera would see what I saw and that's exactly what I wanted to do with my photography Kind of a simple idea. Only freezing one particular moment of one particular time. But through my eyes, as I said, because I always thought a lot of people didn't trust me or believe me. If I had it in a photograph, they'd say, that's it. It was there. So my first camera was a, what you'd call a point-and-shoot 35 millimeter model. It was a $20 job, Vivitar, um, ivory white. It took very good pictures but only had fixed focus and one particular uh, focal length of lens. It was all wide angle. If you got too close to something, it was blurry. But it was understood that that Christmas I would be receiving as one gift the 35mm single lens reflex that I would like. I went to Bangor Photo uh, and they gave me my first camera for Christmas. It was a Pentax K1000 with a 50mm lens, which was pretty much the dimensions the human eye saw in. And in the end, I just digested everything. I had um, John Hedgo's um, famous book on photography. I think you've seen that in one of my uh, YouTube vlogs before, and that's how I learned. I never went to a photography school. I only had a small amount of time inside the Bangor Camera Club, but I found their attitude very technical and elitist, not very artistic. Oh, um, the sky is one five hundredth of a point not blue enough. <laughs> not my cup of tea at all. I was concentrating on art and, and, and making this into something that would allow me to become myself, basically. 
I experimented with all different sorts of films. High grain, low grain, black and white, prints, slides, you name it. And uh, this went on for about four or five years. 1992 was the year I got it. 1993, four, five, six, whatever. I was just using that camera to death. I learned how to do all the manual um, aperture and shutter speed combinations and how to meter and bracket. The only challenge I faced at the end of the 90s as I became an adult was the digital cameras were coming in. And, uh, you know, when I didn't have a steady income, I was still getting an allowance at that age. Um, it was costing me something like $30 a month just to take pictures. And it was all too expensive and all too difficult. So I started thinking seriously about a digital camera. But at the time, the quality was terrible in the late 90s. They were very expensive. And they seemed, honestly, like a luxury reserved for the wealthy. That's how I saw it. As I saw the hobby of photography all along, but I went with it because it meant something to me. And I still have a lot of those prints from those days and those negatives. And I'm proud I took them and I'm proud I learned that way. I'm proud I learned with 35 millimeter. That's the key. That's important. So in lieu of that, I merely get a more digitized 35 millimeter camera, in this case a Pentax P30T, which was a very early automated SLR model. That didn't last me as long as the K1000, which started to go bad with the film winding apparatus. I had to give it to a friend who could repair it. But I got a lot of good use out of that one, too. And that gave me the idea of how to work with automation. Uh, around 2004, I entered the digital photography era with an APEC DV4500, which was a toy. It was a little... Um, uh, grayish device, about the size of a Sony Walkman. And it was mostly a camcorder, but it took four megapixel digital pictures, but if you were too close, or if the light just wasn't right, everything was very, very highly pixelated, and the quality was poor. But it was my first digital camera, and again, I love getting use out of that. Now, the one you just saw right here was my um, second. I got that in 2008. I had come into access to uh, a sudden amount of great deal of money due to a disability, and uh, I decided that, you know, do I go out and spend it on shoes and garbage, or do I invest in my future? And I invested in my future. That was not a cheap camera. It's an 8 megapixel job. I got it in 2007. I don't have one single regret. That has been one of the all-time all-time best cameras I've ever used, and I'm learning more and more about it every day. It's an excellent camera, and the greatest thing about digital is I don't have to worry about cost anymore. I can bracket and do all those things I wanted to do. I can do automation. I can do manual. I can do a combination of both. I can learn a lot more skills, understand computerized photography, editing, Photoshop, and I'm learning more new things every day. And I'm even doing artwork. I think maybe some of you who know me have seen this where I combine my interest of photography with my interest of painting. So it's expanding outward into my reality. And even 20 years into it, I've never made all that much money off photography. I've never sold it, and I've always planned to. It's not that I'm procrastinating, but I want to know a lot and establish a vision for myself that is about myself and my photography before I really branch out into the financially professional aspect of it. I am a professional photographer in name only. But in terms of actually commerce, no, definitely not. I feel I should get my psychological self together first. That's most important. And then see if life will imitate art, <laughs> as it were. And um, I, it's starting to happen, and I guarantee you, I do know how to do it, and I will do it may take a little longer, but all good things come in time. That is the history of my photography. That is the history of the impact that it's had on my life. And that is a little bit of the history how learning some of the technicalities of it has actually helped me to become better educated. You know, some of the things I've photographed uh, have actually helped me to learn a little bit about what they are. But... You know, it's something I plan to extend on, and uh, here I am making webcam videos, so it even extends into that. So, have a happy July, and 
Enjoy the heat. Talk to you later, everybody. See you next time.